Today we're making a cheesy chicken parmesan baked pasta. This cost $10 to make, we'll feed six to eight people, and all of the ingredients came from the Dollar Tree. You'll need a box of pasta, I use penne, but any kind of pasta will do. A jar of pasta sauce, I'm using this garlic flavor. You'll need mozzarella cheese, parmesan cheese, and chicken nuggets. I use three bags, but if you wanna feed more people, I would opt for just two bags and get a box of garlic bread in addition. This one is super easy and will come together in about 15 minutes. All you have to do is boil your pasta for about 10 minutes on the stove. I didn't even use the entire box of pasta. I used about three quarters of it. Pour in your entire jar of pasta sauce, mix to combine, and set aside. While your pasta is cooking, you can either choose to bake your chicken nuggets in the oven or I put mine in the air fryer at 400 for 10 minutes. When my nuggets were done, I cut them into quarters so that I could distribute them more evenly throughout the dish. The only other thing I had to do was shred the mozzarella cheese and then we're ready to assemble our pasta. In a large glass baking dish, I added half of my pasta mixture, followed by half of my chicken nuggets, half of my mozzarella cheese, and half of my Parmesan cheese. And then I repeated this again for the second layer. I covered it with aluminum foil and I baked it at 425 for 20 minutes. Then I removed it from the oven, removed the aluminum foil, and baked it for an additional 10 minutes at 425 as well. I really liked this one, guys. I don't even like chicken parmesan, but I thought this pasta was really good, and my boyfriend liked it too, and he's a little bit harder to please, so I count that as a win. Here's a cost breakdown for those of you who enjoy these videos. Let me know if you try this recipe and if you like it. This one pot Cajun rice skillet costs just $5 to make, we'll feed four people, and all of the ingredients came from the Dollar Tree. To get started, you'll need some jambalaya rice mix. I use two boxes, but if you want to cut the recipe, you can just use one. I also used some smoked sausage and pepper and onion stir fry. I cut the sausages in half lengthwise and then chopped them in the other direction so that they would stretch further throughout the skillet. I also gave my pepper and onion mix a rough chop. No need to be precise here, you're just breaking up any large chunks. In a large skillet over medium high heat with some oil, go ahead and saute your pepper and onion stir fry mix first and saute it until all of the excess liquid has evaporated since these were frozen vegetables. Add in your diced sausages and continue to saute for a little bit longer until your sausages start to get some color. At this point, I realized my skillet wasn't going to be big enough, so I transferred it into a larger skillet to finish the cooking. Then you're going to add in both of your packages of jambalaya rice and continue to saute before you add in the water. This is going to help to bloom the seasonings to give them a little bit more of an intense flavor. Also, feel free to add additional seasonings if you want to. However, I found that this jambalaya rice mix was incredibly well seasoned and didn't need any extra spices. Add in four cups of water and bring the mixture to a boil before you cover with a lid, turn down the heat to low, and allow it to simmer for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, this is what your skillet should look like. Go ahead and turn off the heat, give the skillet mix a good stir, replace the lid, and allow it to rest for an additional 5 to 10 minutes to steam the rice the rest of the way. And that's it, then you're done. This is a quick and easy weeknight meal that only takes about 30 minutes to prepare. It can be made ahead of time and reheated for lunches throughout the week, so it's a perfect addition to your menu. As always, let me know in the comments below if you decided to try this and if you liked it. Today, let's make some KFC Famous Bowls Dollar Tree style. You will need some mashed potatoes, butter or margarine, gravy mix, corn, chicken nuggets, and of course, cheese. Starting with the potatoes, I brought four cups of water and four tablespoons of margarine to a boil, then stirred in my potatoes, put on a lid and set it aside. The recipe called for milk, but I didn't find that to be necessary. Next was the gravy, which I just made according to the package instructions, which was bringing one and a half cups of water to a boil over the stove, add in the gravy mix to a half cup of cold water separately and combine the two over medium high heat until thickened. For the corn, I added two tablespoons of margarine into a skillet over medium heat. I added in two cups of the corn, which wasn't quite the entire bag, seasoned that with salt, pepper, and then added some water and allowed that to simmer. The chicken nuggets went in my air fryer at 400 degrees for 10 minutes, flipping halfway. And then with my KitchenAid mixer, I shredded both cheeses at the same time so that they mix together as they shred. Lastly, I cut all the chicken nuggets into quarters to stretch them a little bit further. 
And then we're done. All of our ingredients are prepped. Let's assemble our bowls. I'm using these aluminum pans from the Dollar Tree that come in a four pack so that I can make these to be reheated later. I distributed all of my potatoes evenly between the pans and then used a spoon to spread it out in an even layer. Then I distributed all the corn and then all of the chicken tenders. Lastly, I gave each bowl a healthy drizzle of gravy and a handful or so of cheese. I didn't end up using all the gravy or cheese, mostly for aesthetic reasons, but feel free to use it all. That's definitely the best part. I've been making Dollar Tree videos on YouTube for about a year now, and I will say that this is hands down one of my favorite recipes that I've ever made. Definitely give this a try and let me know how you like it. This video is a few weeks in the making because I wanted to make sure that it not only tasted like lasagna, but it looked like lasagna. So it took some trial and error, but I'm very proud to show you today a $5 lazy lasagna you can make from the Dollar Tree. You'll need two bags of cheese ravioli, a can or jar of your favorite pasta sauce, some mozzarella cheese, and for a side dish I'm doing Parmesan garlic Texas toast. There are a few steps to making this look more like lasagna, and the first is using a smaller baking dish so that you get more layers of ravioli. You'll also want to make sure your raviolis are thawed overnight, that way they stick together more, which will give you more distinct layers. Lay your ravioli in an alternating pattern to make sure that you fill in every single gap. And when you're adding the sauce, you're only going to add enough sauce to coat the ravioli. You don't want it to be swimming in sauce. You do want them to stick together. Repeat this process until you run out of ravioli. I did about three layers before I ran out, and I only used about half of my jar of pasta sauce. The other half can be used for a recipe like my mini meatball subs. Bake this uncovered at 425 for 30 minutes, and while it's baking, go ahead and grate up your mozzarella cheese. After 30 minutes, remove your lasagna from the oven and top with your mozzarella cheese. I put mine under the broiler until the cheese was brown and bubbling. Once it comes out of the broiler, it is so beautiful, you almost don't want to cut into it. I let it cool for about 5 minutes and then I cut it into 4 slices. I was very nervous to plate this up because I didn't know if it would stay together once I removed it from the pan, but to my surprise it stayed together beautifully and I ended up with this dish that looks exactly like lasagna, tastes like lasagna, and takes about 10% of the work of making a real lasagna and for a fraction of the cost. Of course, I served my lasagna alongside some Texas toast for a 625 dinner that will feed four people.